first, a sophisticated late breakfast or brunch dish to impress your mates. Easy griddled polenta with delicious roasted tomatoes and creamy goat's curd. Now, polenta to the Italians is what mashed potato is to Britons. A staple, incredibly delicious and really straightforward to do. Now, season the water. Just a little touch of olive oil stops it from becoming too sticky. I love polenta. It's a cornmeal made from ground dried maize. The more coarse, the longer it takes to cook. But you can also buy instant polenta, which is ready in under 10 minutes. And I always use this at home. And then whisk that out. As it cooks out, it naturally thickens. You can see the grains becoming almost into one nice, fine, pureed polenta. To take the polenta to another level, flavor-wise, season with salt and pepper, a good knob of butter, and parmesan. Be quite generous with the parmesan, because polenta can be quite dull. I like it quite rich and creamy. Delicious. Now, mix that in. No. A nice, smooth, shiny, glossy polenta. You can eat polenta two ways. Like this, it's a glorious, fluffy mash, or set, then griddled, which is what I'm doing. Start by oiling a baking tray, pour in your polenta. Now, get that in the fridge and let it set. Next, I'm roasting vine tomatoes to really intensify their flavour. Olive oil on the bottom of the tray and drizzle extra virgin olive oil on top. Nip your tomatoes with your scissors. If you didn't burst them before they went in the oven, they'd explode. Salt and pepper. Garlic. Just squeeze the juice out of the garlic. So as the tomatoes blister and roast, it's going to take on all this lovely garlic. To give the tomatoes a wonderful sweet and sour flavour, a pinch of sugar and balsamic vinegar. This is a wonderful aged balsamic vinegar. And then some thyme. Don't pick the thyme. Just trim it like you're having a little haircut. Nice. The tomatoes only take 10 minutes to roast. Now the polenta's set. It's ready to griddle. It should just fall out. Beautiful. Polenta's a nice garnish for grilled meats. It's great when you're planning a big dinner party. The polenta can be done one or two days before. A nice season. Top and bottom. A nice sort of coating of olive oil and then onto your grill. Now, this looks very impressive, but it's so easy to do. Get that grill really nice and hot. Make sure you've got a fish slice and go underneath to turn. All that nice sort of marking and char in the polenta gives that really nice flavour. Now, tomatoes. Look, you've got these beautiful vine tomatoes that have been roasted and all that wonderful flavour. Now, get your little tomatoes and just sit them on top. Drizzle over any remaining roasting juices. The perfect addition is a goat's curd. Goat's curd gives it that nice sort of salty, creamy taste. Goat's cheese, cream cheese, or creme fraiche will work just as well. Drizzle. A little touch of that aged balsamic vinegar. And then a little basil. I can't wait to dive in. This dish is fantastic when you're entertaining in the morning. Set your polenta the night before, and you can have this casual brunch on the table within minutes. Fuss-free cooking that looks like a labor of love. Roasted tomato soup. Beautiful vine tomatoes. The riper the tomatoes, the better the soup. Take the core out. Get your thumb and place it half a centimeter underneath the tip of your knife. Place it in, and then just twist around. That's the only part of the tomato that we're not using. Red onion and garlic. Red onion because it's sweeter than a white onion. Slice your onions and your garlic. Nice and fine. Traditionally, you'd be making it in a pot. It's so much better to start it off on top of the stove, searing the tomatoes and the garlic. When it goes in the oven, you actually roast the tomatoes and they don't stew. And there's a big difference in flavor. Be quite generous with the olive oil. It makes the soup nice and glossy, shiny. Salt, pepper, and then a little teaspoon of cayenne. Just gives it that heat, but it's not as fierce as chili. Take your tomatoes and just slice them in half. And then a little touch of sugar. That's going to help intensify the sweetness. 
a little sprinkle of aged balsamic vinegar. It gives that nice, dark, rich acidity to the soup. Into the oven, 20, 25 minutes, 180. To make my soup even more irresistible, I'm going to make a punchy sun-dried tomato pesto to drizzle over the top. Now, I'm making this in a pestle and mortar because you feel so much more in control and you're not depending on a blade that's whizzing around at 1,000 miles an hour. Next, in a dry pan, toast off some pine nuts. Toast them to the absolute max and then in. The smell in there is incredible. Parmesan. Lightly grate that. And this is where it starts to become creamy. Extra virgin olive oil. Doesn't need salt because the parmesan's going to season it for you. And just take a couple of tablespoons of the oil that the sun-dried tomatoes are in. Really helps to make that stunning pesto. I can smell those roasted tomatoes. Want them out? Wow. Next, pour in a little vegetable stock or chicken stock so it sits halfway up the tomatoes. Put your spoon through those tomatoes. They break up instantly. Bring that up to the boil. Let it simmer for three or four minutes. I want to make it a little bit more creamy now. Cream in. Give that a little stir. You can keep it rustic and get your masher in. And you've got that nice, thick, rich, chunky tomato soup. Or get yourself a stick blender. Blitzing it like that, you deglaze the bottom of the pan and you get all those amazing flavours from the bottom. Mmm. That's delicious. To make my lunch extra hearty, I'm going to knock up a deliciously gutsy version of cheese on toast to go with my tomato soup. Welsh rabbit. An absolute classic. I'm going to make a roux. 50 grams of butter, three nice tablespoons of flour. And that's all a roux is, basically. Traditionally, you would use flour, butter and milk. But in Welsh rarebit, the milk is often cheekily substituted for a stiff slug of stout. It gives it that strong, gutsy flavour. I want it nice and thick. Make sure those lumps are out. With a nice teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And then season it. Get nice and spicy with Worcestershire sauce. Gives it that delicious, intriguing flavour. Now that smells amazing. Almost brings tears to your eyes. Beautiful. Now. Welsh rabbit wouldn't be a stunning Welsh rabbit without rich, mature cheese. So, and a great Montgomery cheddar. Goes well with beer. And drop that in. Really important to put this in while oh, the roux is still nice and hot because the cheese melts. Now, for the bread. I prefer a good rustic country loaf that will stand up to my hardcore topping. I want that nice, crisp base to my Welsh rabbit. So toast it, both sides. Spread that beautiful, cheesy, beery, spicy mixture. Just great. Got a blister and bubble and gratinate. God. A little splash. Alien and Perry. And back under the grill for 90 seconds. In one delicious, creamy, roasted. Tomato soup. It's coming back to me all those days I had off school. I used to purposely lie about feeling ill just to get a bowl of my mother's tomato soup. How bad was that? But my God, it was worth it. Oh. Now, my Welsh rabbit. Mm. Look at those babies. That just takes cheese and toast to another level. Wow. Roasted creamy tomato soup with a sun-dried tomato pesto serve with the most amazing, delicious Welsh rabbit. I feel like ringing sick. A delicious saffron flatbread with mussels. It doesn't get any healthier than that. First job, the super easy saffron flatbread. Put the saffron into the bowl and a couple of teaspoons of hot water. That starts to infuse the saffron, and so you can maximise on the colour across your flatbreads. 
To make the dough, simply add plain flour, a pinch of salt and pepper to a bowl, and then pour in a dash of olive oil. That makes the dough nice and silky and rich. Your saffron water, and you'll see how concentrated it is now. And then you'll need cold water. Then simply knead to bring the dough together. Mop up all your flour. You can see now the saffron's activated. It's got that really nice colour. Beautiful. Use your wrist and just knead it nicely. What we'll do now is smoothing out the gluten strands. Push and tuck in. Push and tuck in. And each and every time you do this, getting softer, you just sort of form like this perfect, beautiful dough. It smells delicious. That saffron is very powerful. Now, sit that in your bowl, cover it with clean film, let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes. This relaxes the dough, making it easier to roll and gives it time to infuse with the saffron. I'm going to cut that into three and then roll them nice and thinly. Now, lightly flour the surface. And then just bring that to like a perfect ball on the board. Once you've got that nice ball, your rolling pin, and just roll it out. Now, it doesn't get any simpler than that. And then just lightly flour that on top. And a little salt. Cooking the flatbread is easy. Just pop in a hot, dry pan, and they're ready in minutes. As it hits the pan, it starts to blister. She's ready for turning. Beautiful. Get the colour on there. Now you want it nice and crisp, almost blistering on both sides. And because it's nice and thin, it's cooked. Once browned on both sides, just cool on a rack. Flatbread's done. Now onto the mussels. Now the secret behind cooking great mussels is in the speed you cook them. The key is to chop and prep your ingredients before you start cooking. First thing, pancetta. I want it quite chunky. If you can't get pancetta, I always like to use a sort of streaky bacon because I want to sort of render all that flavour out the streaky bacon. Now, tomatoes, garlic and chilli. Cherry tomatoes, they're just going in whole. The garlic, just crush the garlic. So all that flavour comes out. Chilli, I want some heat in here. That's everything prepped. Now to get it cooked. A little touch of olive oil. Pancetta in. Pancetta takes moments. Once it's brown and crisp, put your garlic, chilli and whole cherry tomatoes into the pan. Mussels go in. OK. And I'm using dry sherry. I think it works better in this recipe than white wine, which is classically used at this stage. Then oregano, finely chopped, stalks and all. I'll go on. And then just give that a little mix. And you'll see those muscles start to open. Lid goes on. You've got to lock in that flavour. Got to lock in that heat. The mussels will take four to five minutes to steam. In the meantime, cut your flatbreads into strips. Crispy and crunchy. Now, the mussels. Wow, that is incredible. My goodness me. Now, that is one lunch I definitely don't want to miss. Healthy and delicious. Doesn't get any better than that. Incredible. Steamed mussels with saffron flatbreads, made in minutes and packed with protein and vitamins. This is one fast food meal that really is healthy.